quickly? Checking, one, two, three, checking. Okay, George, that's good. And next one, please. One, two, three. Checking, one, two, three. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tell us what in, Jack. All right, George. Whatever you're ready. Hello out there, all you lucky people. This is Lonesome George III of the Delaware Destroyers. Coming to you live tonight with the message of the blues. The blues trying to reach you in your heart and in your home. And with me tonight is the king of the boogie, my personal favorite blues, Sir John Lee Hooker. Thank you very much. Indeed glad to be here with you. I can see that. Not only yeah. is he the king of the boogie, but he is the most impeccably dressed man in show business today. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> But John, it's great to have you here, coming all the way in from San Francisco, taking time out from your schedule to visit with us. Well, indeed, glad to do it, and I'm always happy to work with you, George. I let the people know out there, you're one of my greatest admirers, and you're one of my greatest friends. Thank you. Thank and you. So I, I, like, I love working with you. Thank you. So we're going to start off the show here. If you can kind of tell us, uh, not too many people are... Your background, would they like to know? I mean, I know you came by way of Mississippi, up to right. Tennessee, Detroit, and uh, all the way to California. Yes, I did. It, uh, I started I was playing when I was about 12 years old, really. But uh, my stepfather, Wilmore, I learned from him an unusual style with no changes know nothing, just come in from the heart and play guitar. So I think that's the way the blues should be played, with a feeling. You can't write blues on a paper. You can't write feeling on a paper. You got to, you feel it and then it comes right out. People say, how do you do that? Why so many groups and different rock singers you find doing your beat, but they don't do it just like you. I said, no, they, they, they're getting close, but they don't do it just like me. I said, I could and I can. If I wanted to play direct, I could play direct changes, but that wouldn't be John Lee Hooker. Right. I'd be off the beaten path, and I don't do that. And I, and I left Mississippi when I was 14 years old. You left Mississippi when you were 14? Yes. You left. And, I, and I, I drifted into Memphis and Cincinnati, I had aunties in both places, so I do a little work here and there, and, and so and so I would stay with them. Was that musical work you did? No, no, just usher in theaters and, you know, seating people in you know, a little red jacket on, mm -hmm. you know. So, no, but I, my heart and my mind was into my music all, all the time, but I had to work some to survive, you know, because I wasn't known. Mm -hmm. But I for sure that I was going to get known, that's the way I felt. And then I... Uh, you were confident? Yes. And, uh, and I left Cincinnati. I come into Detroit when I was about 18 or 19. And that's where I grew up at. Until I moved to California 14 years ago. And that's where I got famous at. Detroit? Uh, yes. And you and, uh, started your earliest recordings uh, around, around in, in the Detroit area? Yes, my earliest recorded. I, I did it in... I recorded it in 1950, and it came out in 1951, Boogie Chiller. Boogie Chiller. And there, um, this guy, El Elmer Barber, he discovered me. Or Bunny Bestman claimed he did, but he didn't. <laughs> and so he didn't. It's, Elmer Barber, this guy, he discovered me, and there, uh, he brought me to Bunny Bestman. He had a little label called Sensation Label. And I got on that label and I did Boogie Chillin', and Boogie Chillin' was so big that his, his little label c couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he released it out to Modern, you know Modern Record? Mm -hmm. And they, they, was, they, did a, they had a worldwide, worldwide distribution then. And never where you, where you went, that's all you could hear on Boogie Chillin'. They were jukebox, every time you turn your radio. And that you was know. with you alone, without a band? Well, yes. A solo? Yeah, solo just mean... Electric um, guitar? Yeah. My, just me and my guitar and my feet. That's great. And it sounded like a full rhythm section, mm -hmm. which I guess, well, you know it. I don't have to tell you. You you heard it a many times. Yeah, I have, but the, the other folks haven't. Yeah, right. Well, they love to hear it. Well, they know it now. And That's I'm a unique them. thing. People don't make records one guy alone, mm -hmm. a, a, a uh, up-tempo song, and, mm -hmm. and have, have it catch on like that. You're probably mm -hmm. one of the fewest people ever in the history well, of shows that such a thing. I'm one of the few. Uh, you know, I, I have tried to think of someone did it you know, in that type of a music to catch on like that. You know, I did, you know, a folk song, I had mm -hmm. one of the kids, 
do folks, people like Dylan and Joan Baez, they just kind of, but just blues what I did. That's right. Mm, I never know nobody to just do it and come just a Money. worldwide hit, you know, like that. Well, because, because I was carrying a tremendous amount of rhythm with my feet. And, Ready, Gary? We're rolling. Rolling half speed. Half speed? Just now. You got five seconds? The guy. Whoever he was. Okay, I, I got it. All right? Yeah. Okay, so Boogie Tillin uh, called on Worldwide. It must have called on Worldwide because uh, I know the people in England were listening to it because uh, oh, yeah, well, some, some bands over there started recording your songs and sort of idolized you. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of them. You remember a group called the Groundhogs? You heard of them? Yeah, uh -huh. you, you probably didn't. But you've but, mentioned them to me before. Yeah, they, they was in England. They and, and I went over there and they were playing that song. And it, it, you, you, she was on the outside. You you, you think I was in there playing it with them? Really? Yeah, because they really studied uh -huh. you know, my music over there. And and he was a big, he was a big treat to me. And I was really was proud of them really doing something like that. See that particular song. It had a tremendous rhythm. It, he was did an over an A, what they call Spanish then. Yeah. And then it, the Spanish has a full sound. It just sounds sound like just a, two or three people doing it. And, and I had, you know. And those cats were doing it too. Yeah. And I had a foot stomp, you know, like, like kind of tremendous amount of rhythm with my feet, along, right along with my music, keeping time with my music. And there are uh, people they could dance by, they could, do, you know, anything like that. It was just yeah. something new and different. Well, they uh, they put it. They adapted it to a banner. The the animals did several of your songs. Oh yeah, the animals. They did boom boom. They did Marty. You know, they did on down the line. Uh, and they did you know. They was my. They, they was a great. They was great fans of mine. The so I, the, the Rolling the, Stones, the Bob Dylan. You know. They opened for you, didn't they? Well, yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, when 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 the Stone first was getting organized, you know, I was over there with. Uh, but uh, Don Arden, he was producing me over there. He was booking me show over there. And there, uh, Don Arden, when the Stone was getting together, they were getting organized. They, on the first tour, they went out and played, you know, both of my opening act. Uh, they, we went all through England and places like that. And they uh, make them, and uh, he was crazy. Now he's just as crazy then as he is now today. <laughs> <laughs> And so we had a lot, a lot of fun with those kids, and uh, this. It's interesting to know that uh, yeah. when you were yeah. that popular, there's people open for you. Yeah, and then there, uh, you know, and I was the first person to put Bob Dylan on the bandstand. Oh yeah. Right, right, right there in Gutty's Folk City, 11 West Fourth Street. You, in New you, York. You, you remember a little club called Gutty's? No? Oh yeah. Uh, East Folk City. Yeah, Folk City. And he opened for you then. Yeah, he used to hang around with me every night. I was living at the Broadway Central Motel. Uh, Bob likes that white wine, you know. Every night, <laughs> me, me and him, we get, we get through, I get through, I go out and we be have wine, go to my hotel, a little sweet then, me and him still all night, you know, drinking wine, playing guitars. Him and his girlfriend named Susie, don't know why you never heard mm -hmm. that name before. She's on one of his album covers. Yeah. Well, it was, she'd be in there and they getting drunk, they'd be fighting in the room. <laughs> and, 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 and then in the uh, hotel, man, you said, Mr. Hooker, you can't handle Bob, I'm going to have to put you out the hotel too. So, in other words, <laughs> it started, it's like over a 20 year period, these uh, people, uh, the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, the Animals, uh, yeah. just about every one of them have brushed up against you in one shape, form or another. Oh, I know yeah. the Jay Giles band was wild about your music and has cut some of your stuff. Yeah, ZZ Top, the, he do the boogie, you, know, mm -hmm. you, you probably heard him do Oh that. yeah. And so, uh, Isn't there one band you're leaving out that does some of your music? Isn't there just one you haven't mentioned yet? It's probably a lot of them I've never got. Well, just can't you think of one off the top of your head? And can't you think of one? Like maybe, maybe the George Thurgood and the Destroyers? What about them? They oh, them. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, George Thurgood and the Destroyers, when I heard him, you know, he he was, George Thurgood, he was so close to me. I said, now, what, what is kid <laughs> learn to play like me so close? And the first thing I heard about you was during the uh, one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. What's well, tonight we'll get together and do Boogie Chill and how would that be? Oh, good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Because I, uh, um, I drug my guitar all the way here. I wish I'd have started on the bus with the guys. Uh -huh. But, but I, I know you can do it just like I do it, but I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but you it's do feeling, it. It's feeling, John. It's just feeling. I don't know how you do it. I literally lay in my bed at night. It's, this is the truth. I said, now how this kid 
Yeah, you can do Brooklyn chillin' and lick my lick. I said, I said how, how do I? I said, nobody do like John Lee Hooker. <laughs> I said, but he's really close to me. You know? And, and uh, not only that, on down the line, you do this practice, you know, a lot, a lot, you know, a lot of mama too. And I love that too. Anybody in the world, I love to see do it, is you. Thank you. Because I know you use a very honest, he's close to me as peanut butter to a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Good, good stuff. Do what are the blues? What are the blues? All right, that would be set. Okay. That's him. Yeah, John. Yes. Have you just look right into the lens and as briefly, short as you can, just tell us what the blues are. It's going to be cutting with a bunch of other people. Well, let me tell you this. He said, "Tell you what the blues are." It's hard to do. I've been asked that a lot of time. What is the blues are? The blues is a feeling. It's something that you don't write on paper. It's something that you got to feel like when you, some people think you got to be down and out, broke and hungry to, you know, to do the blues, but it's not. The blues is a thing, anybody can have the blues. The whole world can have the blues. When you're feeling low and out, that's the blues. And, the, uh, and any song that you do, ballad, rock, is always taken from the blues. But it's saying the same thing that we are saying that I'm saying when I'm saying the blues. And the blues is, is the thing that it picks me up when I'm down. When you're down, the blues lift you up. Like if your, your old lady done left you, you're in love with her. You know, that, that's when you can sing the blues. Or uh, when you're having problems, that's when you can sing the blues. Now, you, now, even rich people have the blues. You can have all the money in the world, but you can have problems. And that, that, that's what you call the blues. That's as close as I can describe it. I cannot put it in no other form. Uh, what is boogie? George should ask him. Okay, you're wrong. Yeah, still rolling? Yeah, I'll start this. Yeah. You want me to say? Yeah, you can ask him. All right. About the boogie. Okay, now, we all know that emotionally, feeling wise, nobody right. can deliver the message of the blues like John Lee Hooker. Right. But you are noted as the king of the boogie. You are and, the boogeyman. And you want to know what is the boogie? Lay it on us. Well, the boogie is, it's, it's really rock. Yeah. Where you can dance, but you can do anything you want to do. But you can, you, you can get up there, you can just dance and do anything. You, you can't sit still, but it, but it just—it's not hard rock like you do, but but it's really slow boogie rock. You, you can just sit down rock and do anything you want, and get up there. It just the that's what that's what the boogie are. Now right here, uh, and and the uh, rock was taken from the boogie and stepped up, speeded up real fast like a. Like Chuck Berry, and you do it, but the <laughs> slow rock boogie. Yeah. Mm. That, that, that what the boogie. It's is. In between rock and roll and the blues. Yeah. That's what the boogie is. That is what it is, because you know you can't slow dance by the That's by right. the boogie. Like when when, when we play the boogie, everybody gets on their feet. That's right. You know they they get some start boogieing. Okay. And now in the, uh, I'm the, I originated that, and everybody. Rock band, everybody, you know, they, you know, they, they boogie. They, they, they boogie this, they boogie down, they're doing that boogie. They're playing the boogie. But it's just slow rock boogie. Slow rock, but it's boogie. Boogie chilling. Uh huh. Well, there you have it. Do you want to talk at all about the Lightning Hopkins? Well, I'd say one of well, the well, greatest. Well, it's, it bring back sorry. I hate that the, me and the man was so close. Hold on one second. I, I'd rather not, but it's you. And, Mark, you could just ask the question. Okay. You want me to ask like right now? Okay, sure. I was in, uh, I went to Texas in 1977, and uh, I went down there primarily to try to get my band some work. I had a tape of our upcoming first album. And while I was there, I was trying as hard as I could to, to try to see Lightning Hopkins play, because I'd never seen him. Uh, and uh, he was playing at the Juneteenth Festival over in Houston during June of 77. And, uh, John Lee Hooker was also on the bill and yeah, somehow well, I got backstage and you don't know, remember, remember this but you introduced me to Lightning Hopkins. Uh, I walked yeah. up to you and said hi and you just real quick said Lightning here's this guy that wants to meet you. And, uh, okay. Look it's John Lee Hooker. I know. <laughs> I'm mad. Well, you, you mean you did? Well I meet so many people on it. Yes I'm ready. I don't know who I was though. Hmm. I, th I think he was asking something about England. Mm -hmm. 
and they're, uh, the blues who make the blues really big, in this country bigger than it ever been, it had to go over to Europe and England, and I think it was in the early 60s when all the groups through there and the blues singers, John Mill and the rest of them, they got a hold of the blues and they made it really, really big over there. And, there, and then the people over here, you know, got wise and, 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 it, and it broke out over here. But they first got so big in England, everywhere you go, over there, they was talking the blues, they was singing, that's all they talked about. You, you, you couldn't, and I'm an old he was same as the president over there, bigger. Hmm. And, and if I was bigger over there than I was, yeah. Was that, you were there in the early 60s playing? Right around 62. You were there playing, li performing live? Yeah. Yeah, so you I mean, experienced it firsthand. Yeah, I mean, Brian McGee and, and our Sonny Terry and our, uh, oh, Dixon, we all over there. And the blues was so big over there. And, and, it, and, it, and it wasn't that big over here. And we, we, we went over there, and that's why we made our big money at over there. Then the people, they got jealous, I guess, the people here in the States said, well, hey, this, this, this belonged to us. The, this, we, we created the blues. This is the home of the blues. That's right. And then all the young kids come with the, grabbing the blues. After the young kids were to England, they said, well, if they can do it, we can do it. And they really did that. And that's why the blues got so big. It first started in England. Hmm. And I uh, um, don't know why you wear that or not, but it did. I've heard some talk. Yeah, he's wear that. And it was really big there. And, uh, and then it got really big in the 60s, but, but it had to go there and come back. Hmm. And then, so and that's... You know, the animals put Boom Boom on the radio. That was a big hit here. Ooh, you know? That was a big yeah. hit. Oh, yeah, I got some fat checks off on it. The fat so. checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a big, big hit, yeah. And then uh, they did Marty, you mm -hmm. know. You know? I mean, I was playing on AM radio. Oh you know, yeah, like, like right on, right like you know, with a lot of other pop music. Oh right, an authentic blues song. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. You know, he was really big and boom, boom, and you know, stuff like that. You, you still know. do boom, boom in your show. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was a big, big hit. The animals did. They made it big and they did Marty and I'm bad like Jesse Jane, and it's on and on. And there, uh, I had the whole feel to myself for the outstanding blues thing. I just, just come out of nowhere. I, I, I was hit with it so hard that I was shocked myself. <laughs> yeah, I really was. I didn't, really? Know, I didn't know all these big good things was happening to me. It was coming on me so fast, I, I didn't know how to handle it, you know. For, for, for a while, I didn't. I mean, you seem to be handling it pretty well, well now. Well, now, yes, yes, <laughs> I do now. But, but then, I, you know, yeah. I was much younger. I didn't know, I used to say, hey, what all these things happened to me? I said, mm -hmm. you know. What was I, your music? Yeah. So I said, well, look, at uh, I, when I was playing in Detroit, I thought I had a little old Creole playing around there before I got famous, piano, drums, and myself, and uh, Eddie Kirkland. You know the Eddie Kirkland? Mm -hmm. I guess you have, I don't know. Oh, yeah. And uh, we all was playing together. Then me and I used to go on the road with just two guitars, just me and him. And there, uh, then David Clayton Thomas, he, he, he made Boom Boom. Mm -hmm. and Cameron, he did. Blood, sweat, and tears. Oh yeah, uh -huh. but uh, he, he, he wasn't, that was his first record, he wasn't that big. So you're still doing it today, the same way, with your small bands? Mm. Your yeah. small band, like you're, uh, you have a guitar, bass, drummer, and yourself now, that's it. Well, I have Deacon, the organ yeah. Deacon, that's right, can't yeah. let out the Deacon. Yeah. I, I guess that's I, it? Is that it? I got four pieces. That's yeah. perfect, okay, thanks a lot. Uh. That's great. Thank you, your food uh. is upstairs, it might be.